wenn ich die Tür aufmache, ändert sich ja nichts, oder? Nee, nee. I love my lovelies. There's the evening. Let's bring color to our lives. Master of disaster at work. I'm sorry, I just had um, just had to eat a piece of bread. It is 7 p.m. over here, so I'm a little bit hungry. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. And if you do so, let me know that you're watching and where you're watching from. That'll be fantastic. My name is Angela. I'm the owner and creative energy from Elf von Helden. I'm a Dixie Bell Elite retailer over here in Frankfurt in Germany. So when you join me, I'm very happy to say hi. And um, okay, let's shut the door. Cheers, coffee. Cheers, coffee, my lovelies. Put it to the side. So, if you can remember, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had this, um, I started with those stands, and um, they were woodworm infested, absolutely. So, one of them. The other one was fine, but this one, it was like on the sides from the top to the bottom, it was covered in woodworms, uh, woodworm holes. And we weren't quite sure if they are still active or not. So I treated it and I had it standing, um, well, um, about two weeks on the side. I placed some white paper underneath, basically to check, you know, if, if you if you want to check if, you, if the woodworms are still active, place a piece of paper underneath and just wait a couple of days or, you know, week or something like that. And if there's like um, sawdust, on there they are still active so and you know so fortunately that wasn't the case um but i treated the, the piece anyway with um with with something against wood warmth so um but there was nothing in there at the end which was good so we're going to work with some wood you meant there's just like one piece going this um 13 47 um, I'm misplacing everything today, guys. Um, this is one of those days. I'm totally confused. <laughs> I'm working on the wrong parts. And so you've got to excuse me. Um, anyhow, this is the... Where did it? Where did it? There. Oh, I remembered correctly. 1347 it is. So <laughs> there we go. Okay. <clears throat> this is going to go on the door because it, this was basically plain. And on the side, we're going to work with, uh, uh, this is from my, hello, liebe Vera. Hi, Ute. This is from my customer who likes uh, the fleur-de-lis. So this is going to come on the side, but just the fleur-de-lis. But uh, first, um, I've treated the whole piece anyway with uh, Boss. Even the colors I'm working with don't really need it. But I knew I had to work with a lot of, um, uh, Dixie Mud to cover those wood worms and um, Dixie Mud is like very open porous and it takes on the paint different than um, than wood 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 <laughs> than wood wood and um, ah, Vera, erinnere mich bitte nicht ich, ich trage zwischendrin meine Schiene der ist de, de, wenn ich nicht dran denke ist okay aber um, nicht gut nicht gut, gar nicht gut um, so I've treated the whole side, but, oh, sorry. So you can see it looks pretty messy and I don't know if you can see, there's like already one coat of boss on there, but there's like one hole next to the other, one hole next to the other. There's like loads, hundreds, hundreds. I don't know. There might be thousands. Um, so. I had uh, Dixie Mud. I used the Dixie Mud in black. That doesn't make a difference because there's Danke schön, this is Lieb. Um, because it's going to be covered in paint anyway. So, but uh, even so, it's going to take the um, the paint on different than normal wood, wood, as I said before. So that's the reason I knew I wanted to work with Boss. Boss is a stain blocker and smell blocker and things like that. So that really helps to um, 
to lock in also the the Dixie mud. You know, Dixie mud is open porous; it needs to be sealed anyway. You you can seal it. You can use some top coat or something like that. That works also. But as I as this is a bleeder anyway, I'm I'm using boss. I'm using the boss in clear. So I've used that already in my German life. Even so, I'm going to stir it up again because it's been sitting now for about an hour. There's one coat already on there. Um, Boss is water-based. So all water-based products. Stir them up nicely just to make sure that all the goodies are mixed up properly. So there we go. There's my brush I used before. I'm just taking... And this is now the second coat. You can also, you can spray boss, you can roll it on. I like to, I like to, I like to use a brush as always. So guys, when you join me, say hi. Let me know that you're watching. I almost forgot in the German life, you know, the um, competition or not. It's, well, it is called competition. It is not really a competition. It's not between us um, creators. They are not, not a challenge. Um, it's just that each of us in the world of chalk paint group put together their favorite products and you can win the box of your choice. There's like six different boxes in there. Everybody created and uh, you can basically um, vote for one of it and win it. And Dixie will lengthen the, the challenge to next Tuesday. It was supposed to be over on last Tuesday on the 28th and they gave us another week because we do need 50 comments. So please, please, please tell your friends about it. I will put the link into the challenge after the live. So that's now the second coat. Wonderful. You apply it with the wood grain, obviously. Boss comes in three colors. This is the clear. I'm working on this here. All the rest is already, sorry, already bossed. It's just basically the, you know, those sides I've done with you. Oh, well, I've done with you because I haven't had it finished yet. Is, um... So bus comes in clear, as I'm using here. It comes in white and it comes in gray. And the amount of codes you put on basically also depends on how heavy your piece bleeds or how smelly your piece is. And um, I sometimes use Boss because I like the to prepare my my projects also sometimes with it because it gives it a nice grip for the paint, even if, it, if it's not a bleeder. So I sometimes do that also. This is something Amy from AJ's Vintage um, said once and I've tried that out because I never even thought about it and it really is the case. It gives you a lovely underground or lovely base to to paint on. So, but apart from that, it depends, you know, how heavy the smell is or how heavy the bleed is. If you put uh, two or three coats on there. So for this, two coats will be fine. So there we go. That's done. Oh, here we are. Hi, Manahase. Hi, Michelle. 
I hope you're safe, girl. My goodness. Fantissimo Furniture. Hi, Angie. Thank you for joining. How are you? Long time no seen. Long time no seen. So, let that dry. Okay, so this is the, this is, this is now we now we come to what I well I didn't really mess it up because um, now I can basically show you that um, you can apply your woody bands before you, or after you painted your pieces. Um, <laughs> here I've applied it before and I basically wanted to start painting on that one, but because I applied the um, the stencil on this one on the other one. Uh, because here, this one, it was just bossed and uh, I didn't, you know, obviously I can't stencil on top of um, that fresh paint embossed. I'm going to <laughs> let that dry. So um, I wanted to paint that with, with the colors we're going for, but I've done this where no woody band is on already. So we're going to apply now the woody band over, um, over paint. <laughs> Which works also. So. But that's, that's a typical me. I'm so confused today, guys. I'm, I don't know. Um, displacing stuff. I'm looking permanently for stuff. I'm losing things. I don't know. So, But you can see already the colors I'm working with. And this is for a customer I've done. I don't know um, who was with me at the time. I know, Michelle, you were. Um, my Hase, and I think Vera also knows. Um, this was from friends of mine, um, from her mom, uh, one, one dresser. It was painted in Muscadine wine, in Plum Crazy, and in um, Peony to get like a berry, darkish berry color. This is still too light. This is the first coat on here. This is going to be darker on the second coat. Going to use some black wax. I'm going to um, use some gold on there. So this this is a plan for this for this piece. That's where we go. Ah, oh, Michelle, you know this is so crazy over there. Yeah, this is so crazy over there. So from from that view, we are pretty pretty lucky over here. I I guess. So oh, wrong wrong bit. This is. Peony, this is from crazy. Okay. So let's apply the would you bend on here. I want to get my there it is. I'm going to, to I'm going to measure again. I've already measured twice today, guys. <laughs> ah. Measuring, me measuring. Me measuring. Um Okay, but I also don't know what you meant. This is the 3047. So that's that's basically the one I've already applied on there. And this is the one which is going to go on here. So I'm going to place your little down so you can see a little better. <clears throat> genau, genau. Innen drin hatten wir die, die grünen Streifen gemacht. Ne? Yeah. So this is going to go about here. And... Um, wood bands are based on wood. It's like sawdust, basically, they use for that. Hypia sawdust, they basically use for that. And um, when they are cold, they do behave like wood. So they're solid. They're pretty solid. You can drill them, you can saw them, you can sand them, you can break them if you have a fragile piece. But um, if you break it, you can rejoin it also. So don't worry if it's broken, you know, it can get fixed. And when you warm them up, they get nice and flexible. This is what we're going to do. Um, so this is then, you know, you can place it then basically on every surface, on curved surfaces, whatever. Everything works. So um, yeah, get them flexible. You can apply them onto um any material almost any material i would say any material yeah it works um maybe apart from silicone i'll take that out 
but you can apply that on glass, on on um, on wood, on plastic, on metal. Everything works works beautifully, and you use a good quality wood glue for all of those surfaces. I use the type on quick and sick, which is my preferable glue because this has like an instant um, stickiness. No, an instant. How do you say that, Michelle? Where's my translator? Um, it holds your mold into place instantly, basically. So especially when you work on vertical surfaces, when you use um, normal or the, the usual uh, wood glue, it is a little more runny, so they tend to slide down. So that's, that helps a little. I'm using one of those backings from one of the bigger wood events as they are um, heat safe to heat it up. I'm using my heat gun. You can use a hair dryer and embossing gun. You can put it on a criddle. Um, it works beautifully um, and it is safer, apart from the criddle. So I put myself on the criddle also. So. <laughs> So I'm just warming it up now. Try not to blow it off this little tray I've made myself. Just to get it nice and bendy. Yeah. Bendy. Let's see if there's already fine. Yeah, you see, and now I can, you know, basically shape it around any area. But the good thing is also you can really um, snuggle it onto your project. You know, especially wood is, you know, it hasn't got an even surface, um, nor has glass or windows or whatever. You know, um, so that really helps. So, put my glue on here. I'm spreading it out nicely. You can use a brush. You know, I'm a messy painter. I use my fingers usually. I'm not worried because the wood glue is water based. I just grab a baby wine, which I oh, amazingly have close to me. My fingers off. So I'm gonna go down. I'm going to measure in a second. I'm just placing it roughly where I want to have it. And higher. That's roughly the middle. So I'm pressing it on here a little harder. You're probably thinking, oh, look at that mess. Look at all that glue. Look at all that glue. So can you basically see what I do? Yeah. So I'm taking firstly my baby one to get rid of. There was there was certainly too much glue I used on there. But I'd rather have too much glue than not enough um, because like this, I know it is sticking properly. And this is a situation I can handle because I can take the glue off with a baby wipe or a damp brush, which I'm going to do now. There it is. So I just use water. Just use water. I 
probably take the paint off now as well because I've just painted that in the in the German life, but um, this is the first coat anyway, so I'm not that much worried. I'll probably reactivate the paint now. There will be second coat anyway. I have to paint over that ornament. So the um, tight bond, it is, um, it is, it looks white, but it's going to dry clear. Even so, I don't want to have any mess around with this project. If you have like a textured project, you sometimes don't mind. You have a little bit of crunchiness around your ornaments, but. Uh, I want to have that. Use a brush to get into those details you cannot reach with, um, with your baby wipe. That's basically what I'm doing here. I'm taking the paint off a little, but it's not too bad. Therefore, I've just painted it. It's uh, pretty good. And I'm rubbing with my brush over the fresh painted areas. So um, now I'm going to reheat it again. I'm going to check. Yes. That looks good. Heat it again so it's nice and warm and I'm going to really push it you don't need to worry about the details of the the mold nothing is going to happen the only thing which happens the mold itself snuggles itself nicely onto the under or onto the base you've just placed it on and you won't have any, any lifting edges or something like that, like you sometimes do have when you work, or not sometimes, mostly do have when you work with um, paper clay or resin molds. So take the glue off. And nor the water, nor the pushing does harm the mold itself. And you can, you know, basically paint over it straight away if you wanted to. It's a time saver, life saver, and they're ever so, ever so pretty. I just love them. I just love them so much. So, there we go. That's fine. <laughs> um, well, there are knowing, knowing, knowing. Um, I've heard about them, yeah. Certainly nothing they can do better than Goodie Band, but uh, um, it's always the way it goes. When you have a good product, you always have people who try to copy it. Let's try to copy it, isn't it? Mm. Okay, so that's done. Put that on, put that on the side. 
So everything. I'm just lucky everything drops to the floor because um, if I had to pick it up from the ceiling, I'm too small for it. Um, so let's go to this side. We're going to do some gray stenciling on this one, and I'm going to use the uh, flexible paste from Posh Chalk. Flexible paste from Posh Chalk. Um, that, and that, 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 that. So flexible paste from Posh Chalk. Um, it's basically like the metallic paste from Posh Chalk, just in plain white. So you can mix in your own color basically to tint it. And um, you can, you can basically um, let it pop like the like the metallic paste if you wanted to if you wanted to but you can also use it for 3d stenciling so i'm just going to put that on here i'm going to measure in a second but i'm firstly place it roughly maybe i'm lucky maybe i'm lucky and um, let's see if i remember I'm going to place it correctly in a minute. I just want to see if there is. Haha, <laughs> guys, this is about. Okay, a little higher, just a teeny weeny little higher. I want to have it. A little higher, I want to have it. So, there we go. Okay, and I'm going to tape that down nicely. Because I don't want to have any lifting in a minute. Besides, I'm just going to measure to eyeball that's, um, you know, this, if it's a millimeter off center, that's not that much of a problem. I'm also going to cover those holes because I don't want to have those. So, and you, you basically, you can use a spatula, you can use a silicone brush, you can use um, painting, um, knife, whatever. And this is the paste, that's what it looks like. It is water-based also, and it is really a paste. And you can apply it nicely. So I'm using this little painting spatula. I'm putting some of that paste on the back. We're not going to pop it. Just um, bring you a little closer. No, I'm gonna pop it. So. Sorry, sorry for the noise. Sorry for the noise. So, um, same thing basically done on the other side. Basically pushing it into my stencil. Try not to lift it. Coming in different directions. 
And if you don't mess it up, I mean, you know, I can mess up anything. <laughs> so if you don't mess it up, you get like a, a nice and um, clear um, stencil image, so to say, raised stencil image. I try to do my best not to mess it up, but you know, I can't guarantee for anything, um, especially today. chaotic and have a little more. I'm going to smooth that down in a mi minute also. I'll show you how you can do that. Oh, this is going to be a messy area. I can feel that. I can feel that. So you can use a brush also for that what I'm going to do now to smooth that really down. I mean, you can sand it down afterwards also if you wanted to. But I've done so much sanding on this piece, I don't really want to sand anymore. So, shall leave that, that for now. So I've got my mud spatula from Dixie Bell here. And I'm just going to dampen it also. And I'm just going to go gently over it just to, and you know, the water just helps it to smooth down the surface. Wipe that off. Ever so gentle. I'm not pushing. I'm not pushing. I'm just moving gently over it. I don't want to take anything really off. I just want to smooth it a little down. See, I'm going to take a little of the medium off while I'm doing that. So, as I said, but the water really helps to smooth the the paste or whatever medium you use. It works on on every medium. If you use the if you use the um, Much, or if you use the, I don't like the one up there. There's still, there's still something going on here. There we go. There we go. Um, if you use the mud, or if you use the sea spade, it also works. So now let's see. Where I made the mess, and now I made some mess. Even the paste is really forgiving. It is really forgiving, guys. It is really forgiving. There's just something here but that's not even paste what you can see here that's um that's more of the water which run over there but you know the rest is like a crystal clear image of that stencil hey vera so what do you think i think that is ever so pretty so and this is going to be done on the other one also, but therefore I'm going to let the, the boss dry first. Obviously, I'm going to put that into water quickly so the paste doesn't dry on my stencil. I'm going to take some of it down. If you have a canvas or something like that on site, you can basically scrape off the 
extra paste or you can basically lay your stencil on your canvas and use the paste up there. So I'm going to wipe it off first because obviously like all pasty things they're not supposed to go down the drain. Oops, sorry. They're not supposed to go down the drain. Put that back in. I'm not wasting anything. So I'm just going to place that in water. Stay with me. Okay, quickly. You should do that with the paste also with it doesn't matter if it's like the flexible paste or if it's the um if it's the sorry if it's the smooth metallic paste because if they dry if they dry in your stencil they it's very hard to get off because they stick very nicely onto anything you you add it onto you can even use it on glass or something like that, those pastes. Obviously not dishwasher safe, but um, that holds up. Sorry, nicely. So, what do you think? That's where we're at now. And now we're going to paint. Now we're going to paint the right one. Or oh, the left one, but the right, uh, the right door. Remember, I've um, accidentally painted this one, even, you know, the, um, the wood event wasn't added yet. That's me. That's just me. Me. So, let's bring that up front. Oh, that up front. down that you can see what we do what we do so as I said we have muscadine wine we have muscadine wine and I basically just noticed that the last time I've used this jar in particular is was in 2020 so that's how long the paint is standing in there so it is pretty thick I didn't water it down yet um, we have plum crazy and we have um, peony those are the three colors. Boss, I don't need any more. Those are the three colors. And I'm trying to get a little organized here. A little of that. Um, this is already much used. So from there to there to there. Okay. Um, this the bottle. Anybody seen my Mr. Bottle? How does that work? Anybody see my Mr. Bottle? <laughs> Guys, I think I think I gotta go to bed. I don't think I should have even gotten up today. Um, I've just used it. Ah, I found it standing behind. I'm sorry. Anybody else as confused as I am? Yeah, is the mm. Michelle? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I do need a nap. I do need a nap. So, um, I've already painted with it before. Probably got to refill that bottle in a minute. So I'm going to water my brush down because the paint has already dried a little and it is it is pretty lumpy, but it doesn't matter. Chalk mineral paints, they are water-based. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to spritz that also. 
just to get that paint move a little easier. Start on the outside. There's my musket and wine. And we go from there. Yeah. Oh, that's messy. This is real marble up there, so obviously the paint um, won't stick. But even so, I don't really want to paint that. I don't want to paint that. So on the brushes. I mean, Dixiebel is now almost three and a half years over here, and those are still my first brushes I'm working with. So obviously, for a lovely smooth blend, it's a bit harder to do with them, but they've seen a lot of paint, and a lot of accidents, so to say. So we're going for this berry look done three years ago, two years ago, three, no, two years ago. I've done, I've done the other thing for Christina and Axel. So I think I want to have a little more of the muscadine. That's what I realized on the other one. So I'm doing that straight away on this one. So this is the nice thing when you have two of the same, when you have two of the same cupboards, you can basically make two different versions. <laughs> And see which way you want to go. So, I've been asked because I've been working so much with the um, terra plate paints lately. I love them both. I mean, they are both heavily paints, doesn't matter if it's the chalk metal paints or the terra plate paints. They have different behavior, so it also depends, you know, what look you're going for um, and what you want to, what you basically are ex expecting from your finish. If you want to have a smooth surface, if you want to have a textured surface, if you, if it's important for you to reactivate your paint at any time to create to get like a layered look without um, thick, thick coats of paint at the end when you apply loads of layers. So this is basically what you have to think about. So and this is going to be a smoother blend, not as much of a textured surface. So that's why Also, because the other one was done in those in this color range, that's why I'm using the you can really see. I've really don't know if you can see that, but I've really worked the bristles off. Can you see that? <laughs> I've worked that brush so much, there's like especially on those edges, is like the bristles have come off so. I think it's time for a new brush. Time for a new brush. So, musket and wine. We come in with our plum crazy, crazy plum, plum crazy. I'm using a lot of water because I didn't, um, I didn't cover the, I didn't put it in baby wipe or anything. So that's. Um, paint has dried in there a little so do it as I say not as I do you should you should when you not using your brush put it into the damp cloth or a baby wipe or something like that to protect it from the paint drying in it 
Um, yeah, zebra brushes, I love the also, but um, I do carry them in the shop. But, uh, you know, obviously, I had those ones first, and um, I'm looking after my brushes, you know. That's. Uh, moving it a little into each other for now it's going to be this is the first coat guys so this is not about perfection or anything the first one again covered so that's what it's supposed to look like and guys this is the first coat don't forget I mean this coverage is just unbelievable Plus, you know, this is this project has been bossed before. Boss gives gives your paint a lovely grip, a lovely coverage. So that's really, really perfect. So I'm gonna come in with my musket and wind for now. Just to you don't really need to do much, you know. I'm just gonna go over those where those two marry, so to say. I'm hardly touching the surface, keep my brush a little damp. Just to marry those together. First coat, still first coat. Not to be perfect at all. I forgot about the top here. Musket and wine is pretty much dry up here. So. Not much you can do wrong. So, my mask and wine is already dried. Match. Yeah, I think this is more the color I would like to go for. Not as Not as um, light as the other one. Have it a little darker and um, it might be some crazy. Yep. That's what I like. Just like a teeny weeny little of peony I mean the mini is not ideal for this you really should go for just gonna add it in the middle you should go for a, whatever a round brush more in those areas so not crazy. Yeah. 
I always say I'm not going to go for a perfect blend and then I'm still trying it on the first coat, aren't I? But you shouldn't because if you overwork the paint, you, you know, you sometimes do, do worse than, than good because you may, you may take the paint, you may take the paint off, you know, at the same time when you work it, when it's not uh, dried yet. But even so, you can see, works nicely. Around here, it's more like a vignette. More like a vignette. Oh, I like that. I think that looks looks quite pretty. So I see if that's enough of the. Don't need much. Just don't don't need much for up there. This is just supposed to be like a little bit of a highlight in the middle. Ever so subtle. This is my plum crazy brush. I'm going over it now. And I'm going in all directions. There you go. I like that. Mm. Oh, guten Appetit. Enjoy your dinner, Vera. So, my lovelies, what's the time? 50 minutes. I think that's that's good to go. That's good to go. I'm going to show you both now. Yeah, I think this one is definitely where I want to go. This is too too pinky for me. I like this color a lot more. What do you think, guys? What do you think? Okay, my friends. I'm so happy you joined me tonight. Sorry for being so chaotic. Um, master of disaster. My hand is still not very well. Um, I have like, you know, one of those bandage things I'm, I'm working in between, but obviously for painting, I've got to take it off sometime. Um, I'm happy that you've been there guys. I'm going to check for some questions in a minute and I'm wishing you a lovely evening and lovely weekend. Look after yourself um, and stay safe wherever you are guys. And um, if you have any questions, just uh, contact me if you want to. Bye bye. Tada. Tschüss ihr Lieben.